bias developed over time as the printers increasingly took one side or the other in the arguments over the fights with Great Britain as they get upset over taxes. Uh, the Stamp Act obviously has a big impact because it affects the printers directly because they're the ones who are going to have to put stamps on newspapers in order to uh, obey the law. And so they get really, in, you know, opposed to that. And so as, other, as time passes after that, they continue to uh, oppose the action of the British because they're afraid the Stamp Act's going to come back. And uh, it, it develops over time. What ends up happening is really by, oh, 1771 or so, it's pretty much one-sided. The Patriot side is being presented, but the Loyalist side is not very common unless you're in a community where the British Army is present. As communities become polarized, if you're going to sell your paper, you've got to come down on the side that most of the people are on, and that increasingly becomes true. Now, one of the things that I think is fascinating about the 18th century is that you also, because of the presence of the Enlightenment, you have this growing sense that if everybody looks at the evidence, they're all going to reach the same conclusion. And, of course, the patriots think they're right, the loyalists think they're right. And so, on one level, you can argue that pay, the printers say, oh, this is a good justification for something that's going to make me money. I can do this because it's the right thing to do. But uh, the reality is that if I'm going to keep selling papers in Boston, you know, prior to the British Army gaining control of the town, then I've got to be, uh, you know, in favor of Sam Adams and his group, or I'm going to be in real trouble. The, their perspective of the role of the press was to create community. And so they were trying to bring everybody together. They didn't want to just, here's all the information you decide for yourself. That's not what they were trying to do. They weren't trying to be objective. They were trying to be subjective and push everybody in a particular direction. And so that fact means that they come down on one side or the other. And that really is going to remain true of American journalism until you get to the 19th century.